expert Omai Congo Dibinga joining us to break down what happens next in the struggle for justice for Brianna Taylor. So first of all, you know, quickly break down what happened to Brianna and why it's caused so much outrage across the United States and world. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. And what happened was we had police in Louisville, Kentucky serving a no knock warrant at the home of Brianna Taylor. And they had they were looking for a particular individual, not her. They actually already have the suspect in custody, yet they still executed this no knock warrant while Brianna was sleeping with her boyfriend in her underwear after they had watched some movies. And according to her ex boyfriend, her boyfriend, they didn't announce themselves. And when he heard a break in, he started to fire. He was legally licensed to have his, 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 his gun. And then they started shooting into the house and shot 20 times, killing her. This is a woman who was a former EMT, no problems with the law, nothing like that. And she was killed. They played all time types of games of where her body was when her mother came to find her. And of course, that since there was no video, people couldn't really see it and be as shocked as they were with a killing of right. George Floyd or an Ahmaud Arbery. But this happened four months ago. And now it turns out that the police lied to the judge as it relates to getting the actual warrant. And once again, they already had the suspect in custody. So we are protesting because we want to raise awareness that her life mattered and that we need to make sure that these officers are brought to justice. One has been fired, but to date, they have been no arrests. Right, so and I want to get to that in a little bit, but tell us about the settlement that Brianna Taylor's family is receiving. It goes beyond just money, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And so many of us, as we understand, are fixated on the money. But as you mentioned, there are several reforms that have been initiated. Before the settlement, they already scrapped no-knock warrants. They also are, are starting to require that these officers actually live in the community. That was part of the settlement because many of us who lives in, live, live in these neighborhoods feel like the police sometimes are more of an occupying force. They come in, police us, and then go home to their neighborhoods. Also more support and resources towards social workers in the community so that police are not being called to deal with mental health issues or mental awareness, mental disability issues that's also been put in there. And then also looking for an independent, an independent investigator to, to look at these situations when they happen because the relationship with the prosecutors and the police is a serious problem in the United States where prosecutors are too often not willing to bring up charges with the police because they actually work in tangent with them on so many other right. cases. So we need independent investigators at these times as well. So how does Brianna's family and her advocates feel about this settlement? Do they see this as enough? No, not at all. Her, her, her mother and sister and other family members, you know, they said this is the beginning of the process. They are also calling for the officers to be arrested and to face charges. And many of us who are in the movement fighting for, for justice for her, we're also saying that her family, yes, deserves this settlement, but Brianna and the people fighting for her deserve an arrest because right. justice delayed is justice denied. And so, we are four months into this. We want more. So we're running out of time here, but you know, give us a quick update about what's happening to the police officers who shot Brianna. What's going to happen to them in, in, in terms of criminal charges? Well, currently, right now, currently, right now, we see that the, the, the attorney, the state prosecutor is, is dragging his feet right now. There have been no arrests and one has been fired. And the ones who are still there are currently receiving their paychecks and going about their business. So we are going to keep fighting, keep protesting and keep raising awareness until an arrest is made. But as it stands right now, nothing is happening to them and they are walking around the streets scot-free. Well, obviously, I mean, it's just such a devastating story and obviously one that needs to be righted. Thank you so much for joining us and breaking that down so succinctly and clearly. I'm sure that we'll be having you back soon because there is more coverage uh, that is necessary on this story.